We have covered the GNU image manipulation program several times on the mm -hmm. show. It's a great application. It's a great alternative to commercial software being Adobe Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So the GNU image manipulation program is a free image editor, and you can get it at GIMP.org. It's compatible with Windows, Linux, Mac. So no matter what system you have, you can use it. Um, so what I am going to be showing you tonight, now we've shown how to crop and how to resize images and things like that, but never, not, not necessarily, maybe sometime in the past 451 episodes or whatever it's been, uh, or 541 episodes. That's right. Episodes, yeah. even more. Um, to show you how to actually create an avatar and what that is. Now, when you create a Twitter account or Facebook or something like that, you need that perfectly square picture and it also needs to be the right size. You asked about size of images, like how big should the image be? Right. Well, if you upload a, an image that's too big to social media, it might get rejected because it might be too large for the specifications that they right. have for an avatar. So my daughter has been good enough to provide for us tonight uh, one of her drawings to use for the example. And so what I'm going to show you how to do is, first of all, we're going to get into cropping. So this is the GNU image manipulation program running in single window mode, which makes it feel a little more like Photoshop for those of you who are used to it. I'm going to grab the rectangle select tool here. And you'll notice as I drag the rectangle select tool, I've got this chance to make it all kinds of proportions. See that? Now, as soon as soon as I'm dragging that and at the same time click the left shift key on my keyboard, watch what happens. Click. Oh. Now it is a exact proportional square. So we're no longer working with a dynamic rectangle, we're working with a square. So I can take that and I can put that around the face which is going to be probably what I want for the avatar. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit there so that you can see that a little bit better. And now if I'm not too happy with the crop, I can actually drag that and again, hold in the shift key, and it gives me that proportional exact square once again. And then I can drag in the center to move that around. I like the GIMP for that. It's better than the Photoshop uh, way of doing things. Uh, so there we go. So now that I've got that crop, I'm going to bring that down, crop off a little bit of the hair at the top. I'm going to right click and go image, crop to selection. So now I've got that. If I want to bring it in a little bit tighter, I can go control A for select all and then click and then drag and again, holding my shift key to make it a little tighter, uh, but also proportional. See how the GIMP allows you to rescale the, um, the scaling tool, mm -hmm. even though you've already selected the marquee? I do love that. I don't want to lose the her her 2018 tally there. So there we go. So now crop that in. Boom. So I would say that's pretty perfect. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is let's touch this up just a little bit. I'm going to go colors, levels, and with levels I can do some pretty cool stuff. This is the um, the highlight. See that um, that kind of curve there. Yes. Those are the highlights. So if I move toward that, no, those are the shadows. Well, I'm backwards. Pardon me. If I move toward that, I'm going to get, no, those aren't highlights. My mistake. I'm right. So, so this is where with, you adjust with your the, lighting levels. Yeah, kind of lighting and things like that. Those are highlights. I'm just getting confused because it's backwards and normally we don't have so much white. Um, if I bring in the shadows, which is the left, see how it gets darker and darker and darker and darker it's also much crisper those blacks you get really yes out. exactly you get much more of a digital look to it versus a scan so you can do all kinds of things like that just to touch it up and i would just do that to um just to kind of clean it up and make it look a little more vibrant see how you can drag those little triangles around play around with that get used to it um there's no science to it beyond just kind of feeling where the the colors uh, work, but when you look at the graph or the uh, the curve here, you can kind of see that that's the direction I want to move toward because I have very little shadows in this image. So by moving it toward here, I'm going to get more shadows. So okay, now here's the thing that you may not realize with this image, folks, is that it is huge. If I look up here. 1322 by 1322. So if I view that in full size, it's quite massive. 
So if I save that as just a JPEG image, let's try it. And I'm going to turn on, and notice I'm overwriting. You probably want to, I should, just for best practice, let's call it something else because I don't want to overwrite my master image. So if I show preview, it's going to tell me that that is a 2.4 megabyte file. Well, I know that YouTube, for example, only allows 2 megs, so I need to make it smaller. I can either scale it down or I can bring down the compression so that the quality is a little less. And with 90% comp um, 90% quality, which is 10% compression, it goes down to 751.6 kilobytes, which is much, much smaller. So that's good. So if the problem is size, that's going to solve it for us as far as file size. If, however, the website has proportional issues that they say, look, it can only be 500 by 500, then we need to go image, scale image, and we're going to go 500 by 500 and make sure that that is proportional. And if you have it, see if you can go with like uh, with some uh, better interpolation. We'll go with sync here for today. This is an older version of GIMP. It's not the, uh, the beta. But now if I hit scale, now that is my full-sized image. So it's 500 by 500, perfect crop, and the colors have been enhanced. I'm going to export, and we're going to call that thumbnail.jpg, and I'm going to set Again, show my preview so that I can see what the quality is going to be. And I'm always going to go with, I'm not going to do 100% quality. I'm going to do 99 because look at the difference. It goes from 404.7 all the way down to 350.2. So there's a pretty significant difference there and yet no notable lossiness to the image quality whatsoever. So if I even bring that down to 90, I can't tell the difference there. So I'm happy with that. That's only 134 kilobytes. I'm going to export that. And now I've got that file. So we've established that now we've got that cropped, we've got it scaled, and we've got it saved to an image that is nice and small and it's a maximum resolution of 500 by 500, which is important uh, if you are going to be using that online as an avatar mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, each site, each um, service that you're using is going to have its own um, limitations. Yes. As I say, YouTube has a limit of two megabytes per thumbnail image. Don't know why that is. I mean, you can upload a, a 10 gigabyte video. Yeah. But then you can only have a two megabyte <laughs> image. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's just finding that happy medium between crop, scale, and the actual JPEG quality that you are exporting.